Hi, my name is David Hecht, and I'm an account executive with Probably. Today, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to streamline change management with Probably App Ops. For the purposes of the demo, we've created Fizzly, a beverage distributor, and today I'll be playing the role of admin. So it's my job to ensure that our team can sell and service our beverages and beverage equipment without disruption. I start my day by reviewing approved change requests. It looks like I have a couple here that I can get started on quickly, so I'll go ahead and set up a sandbox. Here in my folders tab, you can see that we are using Probably to empower many different teams and their workflows. For these change requests, I want sales and revenue cloud data because there are a couple of pricing errors. For these, I'll select the revenue cloud team folder, but as you can see, Probably also supports any force.com applications and DX. If I were a developer, I could use the AppOps plugin to seed my scratch org with data, all without having to leave my DX workflow. Within the folder, I can see my connections for each of the orgs in our standard release path. As you can see, these orgs were already set up as connections via industry standard OAuth authentication. Prodly never stores actual credentials, only tokens which we encrypt and store in your own org. I also have access to all of my available data set templates. Since I'm seeding a dev box, I need to be mindful of getting the data I want without blowing through the org limits. Prodly enables me to select just the data that I need to move, which in this case is only hospitality and restaurants with more than 500 corporate locations as Fizzly is running a promotion that directly impacts them. Probably also helps ensure that we are protecting sensitive data throughout the entire development lifecycle. If I wanted to make sure that I avoided accidentally emailing my entire contact list, I could simply click into field properties under billing email and enter in a dot invalid for post fix value. If I did want to make sure that I was protecting confidential data throughout the development lifecycle as well, I could search for an object come back into field properties, and then make sure that I had set random value clicked, which will then scramble that data. I also have access to deployment plans, which run group of data sets sequentially. And this is how we enable our business users and non-technical teammates to more directly manage their apps. We pre-configure the data sets and predetermine which org connections they can use. Now, once I'm here, the only real decision that I have to make is which org I'm going to deploy data to and from. I'm going to see the sandbox that I just created for this change request. Since adopting Prodly, we've been able to better use our available sandboxes and avoid overriding each other's work. If I wanted to, I could select up to five destination orgs at once. So now I can go ahead and click deploy. Prodly will send me an email when the deployment starts and finishes. So I can go ahead and work on something else while it runs in the background. For the sake of time, I'll go ahead and skip to a deployment that I ran earlier. In the results, we see that AppOps automatically moved the entire data schema at once, maintaining the data relationships and preventing duplicates. Proudly actually offers several advanced duplication prevention methods, so regardless of the structure of your data, we've got you covered. Diving into the record results, I can see each record in the source and its match in the destination org. Had there been errors, it would also show me the reason Salesforce gave for not accepting the record. These errors are the same you'd get if I were using Data Loader. This granular reporting allows me to immediately see what failed so I can fix it and simply rerun the data set template again. There's no need to comb through CSVs to find my mistake. AppOps tells me exactly what to fix. One last thing on the results. AppOps creates a record for every deployment, telling me the who, what, where, and when of this deployment. This gives my VP a clear audit trail of everything happening with the data. So now that I've seeded my sandbox, I'll log in and complete the change request. For the sake of the demo, I'm going to be showing you a use case specific to CPQ. As mentioned earlier, Fizzly is running a promotion for our largest corporate customers. So we want to make sure that the org is set up to run smoothly. Now, while I was in this and testing the environment, I noticed that there was an error in pricing. This box active needs to be checked. So just one click of the button and that's fixed. The last error that I need to fix is on the deposit amount field. And I can find this by going to quote. The way to get there is to go to setup, which opens up a new tab, clicking into object manager, 
in the search box, typing in quotes, clicking there, then going to fields and relationship, and then searching deposit amount. Once I'm at deposit amount, I notice that we are taking off 15%. That's too much. I need it to be 10. So I'll click at it and then scroll down to the data editor and enter in a 10 instead of 15. Now that that's fixed as well, I'm ready to push back into production. So I'll come back into app ops release and I'll reverse the deployment. What I'll do is I'll click into manage dorgs into production and reverse it. But I don't need to deploy the entire thing since I only made one change to one specific data set. So I'll just go ahead and click into price rule here. As for my metadata changes, I'll click load metadata, which will retrieve the metadata in each org and compare the orgs to tell me what's new, changed, or deleted. Unlike change sets, it's easy to filter down to the exact changes I want to deploy. Now, since metadata is combing through all of the metadata in the entire environment, it does take a minute or two to do. So for the purposes of the demo, I went ahead and ran this a bit earlier. And as you can see, any new items, any changed items, and had there been deleted items, they would show as well. I'll go ahead and click continue and now deploy. So now that we've deployed the changes from our sandbox to production, the last thing we want is for our new change to inadvertently break an existing process in Salesforce. And that is where regression testing comes into play. Using AppOps test, I've built a set of regression tests that check to ensure my CPQ configuration is working as expected after updates I make or after one of Salesforce's updates. Understanding that they automatically update three times per year, this is an incredible tool that can be used essentially as a back button. As you can see, I have a handful of tests that are set up to run every morning at 7 a.m. So when I start my day, AppOps test has sent me an email letting me know either everything is working as expected or there's a problem. So now that you understand just how easy and fast it is to make changes in or make AppOps change management, let's take a minute to talk a little bit about how simple it is to set AppOps up. You can be up and running your first deployment or regression test within about 10 minutes from the time you install AppOps. We provide pre-built data set templates as well to get you started even faster. For example, we ran Proudly CPQ template today. So I'll go ahead and show you what this will look like. As we search for the data set template, we'll click into it and we'll take a look at the schema view. As you can see, the schema view gets complicated very fast. But I don't have to worry about being an expert in this because AppOps manages the data schema for me. So avoiding not having to be that expert, this saves me and the team a ton of time. And that's it. An entire deployment in under 10 minutes. I want to thank you very much for your time today and your interest in Prodly.